Uh, there seems to be no end to South Africa's rail sector challenges. This, as President Cyril Ramaphosa has established yet another committee aimed at addressing the crisis in the sector. Vandalism has been cited as one of the biggest reasons for the poor performance. There are now growing calls for the involvement of the private sector for the resuscitation of the country's rail networks. To help us understand the importance of this private and public uh, partnerships in reviving this sector, I'm joined by Dr. Mateta Mokonyama, who is the chairperson of the Southern Africa Transport Conference. Thank you for making time uh, for us, Dr. Mokonyama. Uh, let, let's start with whether or not you think there is appetite from the private sector to invest in this railway industry. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Clement. Definitely there is appetite um, in the industry to participate in the uh, rail sector, logistics sector in general. It has been expressed in multiple uh, forums uh, by the industry. Um, I mean, in terms of appetite, you, you probably would have noticed that there's been a huge growth uh, in uh, freight on the, on the road. Um, and uh, freight on the road has been growing phenomenally. And uh, in terms of the, the projections that the Department of Transport has, it says uh, the number of heavy vehicles will grow from uh, 400,000 to about a million uh, in 25 years. So you can imagine with the congestion that you already have uh, in the ports uh, to grow to more than double the, the road freight uh, will create uh, you know, chaos uh, in the industry. So there is a, a need to, to improve the services, um, and the private sector is saying we want to participate meaningfully uh, in order to improve uh, mm -hmm. the, the infrastructure and the services. Yeah, we now know about the plan to establish an infrastructure manager, I think by the end of October, to enable the private companies or, or operators to, to operate these trains on key freight tracks, whether it's facilitating the movement of essential goods um, such as cars, metals, coal, and even fuel to the ports, as well as even the automotive parts for imports. How would that arrangement work? Does this private uh, public partnership? Yeah, um, it is precisely why at the Southern African Transport Conference you know, taking place in July, we've invited the Department of Transport to come and explain in detail how this thing will work. Because at the moment, there are more questions than answers. Uh, if you look at the policy position of the Department of Transport, it says that uh, there will be you know, infrastructure managers uh, appointed by the infrastructure owners. Transnet owns the bulk of the infrastructure. So essentially, Transnet will appoint infrastructure managers who will give access uh, to the operators. Um, and at the moment, industry is saying, we do not fully trust that Transnet um, is going to be acting in the best interest of the industry. They would probably want to you know, reduce competition. But the department is saying, we will provide some mechanisms, uh, like introducing a rail safety, um, an economic regulator for transport, who will make sure that the tariffs that are charged uh, and conditions that are imposed by the infrastructure manager do not disadvantage uh, those uh, those operators. So there are lots more questions than answers, and mm -hmm. that is creating problems uh, in the industry. Yeah, there, there have been previous attempts to to try and in involve the private operators on some general freight lines. What is it that didn't work with those previous attempts? Well, uh, Transnet um, essentially owns the entire infrastructure. Mm. Um, so it, um, it provides or it gives the operators conditions under which they, they should operate. And it's, uh, Transnet um, often you know, provides slots that will not be to the disadvantage of Transnet. So historically, there's been tensions uh, essentially between you know, Transnet and the, the private operators. So um, operators would rather than use, um, you know, roads uh, or, or freight uh, forwarders would rather use uh, road as opposed to uh, to, uh, to rail. And, and the other thing is that the, the service quality um, that Transnet provides to the operators has actually deteriorated. If you look at general freight, the, the, the delay 
Um, in 2020, they had delays um, of, uh, on average, about three hours. And last year, 2022, it went up to six hours. That's average, uh, meaning that uh, in some cases uh, it's a lot more. So the service quality that the operators uh, receive from Transnet um, has deteriorated, you know, over time. So private sector is saying, even though you are providing access, uh, but you still own and operate, you 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 control the traffic. Uh, your service is not predictable, so um, we cannot rely on you. Uh, so. Uh, they want to get involved more in the quality assurance aspects of mm. our service provision as well. Yeah. So wh- how can government then make the offer more appealing to the private companies that are seeking to invest in, in this new venture? Yeah, there's a lot of clarity required. Uh, so you need to be a lot more transparent as government, um, be transparent in terms of the cost drivers, why is it that um, you know you charge us whatever rate uh, that you charge? Why is it that it costs um, an input cost of six hundred six hundred thousand per employee of Transnet for me to get access to the network? So you need to be a lot more transparent in terms of the cost drivers, but you also need to be a lot more transparent in terms of the causes of uh, the problems that are in the network. Um, you so, so that we solve the real problems. Um, we would not solve the, the, the symptoms. Yeah, and, and w- when it comes to this infrastructure manager, what would you say would be required to ensure that this kind of a manager works as planned and, and then further we're going to see a mutually uh, beneficial relationship for, for both parties involved, the private and the public? Yeah, the, the, the infrastructure manager, as announced by the president, would have to be independent. We'll have to show that uh, they've got the interests of uh, the industry at heart and not Transnet. Now, if Transnet is appointing that manager, it's going to be a little bit problematic, but they have to show that they have the interests of the industry at heart and uh, have tools um, that enable them to determine tariffs, uh, plan appropriately, but then also appropriate funding uh, to provide maintenance um, to make sure that the infrastructure is predict- uh, operates uh, predictably uh, is of high quality. So they, they would have to have you know a predictable funding, um, and um, if they rely on the um, the operations, it means that the, the the service that they provide needs to be predictable, you know, to the to the operators and, and be of high quality. Otherwise. Um, they will not get the 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 the, the, um, the, um, the amount of funding required to to uh, maintain the network, mm. and the, the network will deteriorate even further. Yeah, yeah. Is this where we need to start focusing? Where this public-private partnerships, and even in other sectors, um, of our economy. I'm I'm interested to hear what you think will be the benefits of this private you know, public partnership for our economy? Yeah, so um, Transnet can focus on core corridors, right, Um, on the bulk. And where you need quick turnaround times, you you know, um, uh, delivery is sensitive to innovation. That's where you want to bring the private sector that is able to absorb uh, risks better than the public sector. So for things like iron ore, for coal and so forth, you know, Transnet can, you know, uh, play a role there. But for things like uh, the automotive sector and um, manufactured goods, agriculture, things that require very quick turnaround times, uh, and where you will not get long stories about why you deliver things uh, 10, 20, 20 hours late, then you require the the, uh, the private uh, the private sector. So the private sector can be there to absorb risk, uh, and that's what the private sector, I suppose, is good for. And are you seeing any further opportunities um, that a partnership like this can open up for the rail sector? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if the, uh, if the state makes available the infrastructure, including rolling stock, and private sector comes in as operators, 
certainly there will be improvements. Uh, you know, if, 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 for example, I have to come with my uh, set of trains, uh, rolling stock, and uh, raise finance uh, to procure those trains, that becomes a stumbling block. Uh, so if the, the state commits to providing the infrastructure from which uh, we can lease, uh, or, or the private sector can lease, mm. then it reduces entry barriers. So there will be a lot more competition uh, in the in the industry. The costs will, you know, uh, most probably, you know, you know, go down, and the service quality will most probably also uh, increase. But that means that the, the, the state needs to commit to uh, resourcing. Uh, uh, the 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 uh, infrastructure, uh, providing finance, you know, for the infrastructure. Currently, you know, it's not very clear what where the state wants to go. There, it says, for example, in the policy that uh, they will only, you know, provide the the, the uh, railway network, but the rolling stock, for example, has to be, you know, provided by the uh, by the private sector, which becomes very difficult, especially for new entrants. All right, Dr. Mateta Mukonyama, thank you for making time for us.